Hi folks, thanks very much for joining me for this week's vlog. I could be walking on a sandy beach in the Bahamas, but I'm actually at Grafham Water. I'm here to fish with Tim Joyce, who's a professional fly fishing guide, and hopefully I'm going to pick up some tips and share some insight into the life of a fly fishing guide. So without further ado, let's get into it. car park now and uh, I've got to say I'm more than a little surprised how busy it is uh, considering the heat we've had the last few days uh, the, the car park's filling up real quick I think it's due to be very little wind today and I've just been speaking to a couple of guys in the car park saying there's going to be thunderstorms at two o'clock well I've only brought flip-flops Hi, I'm joined by uh, Tim Joyce, he's a professional fly fishing guide and hopefully he's going to show me how to fish today on Grafham Water. This is his uh, local venue and before we go out on the boat and uh, maybe go through some different tactics that he uses here and different scenarios with clients, I'd, I've got a few questions that I thought I'd pose to him. So are you ready Tim? Go on, go on, far away. Oh, mastermind round. Far away. Okay, so obviously you fly fish, I know you competition fish as well, fishing for the uh, the dogs isn't it? Absolutely, Red yeah, Red dogs. dogs. Uh, great fun competition no, fishing, yeah. I do it myself a bit, uh, really enjoy it. So, my first question is, is, is how did you get into fly fishing? Well, I was always a keen angler, through my dad mainly, uh, we used to course fish a lot. And uh, you would, used to have the old course fishing clothes season of course, between March and of June. Course, yeah. So as a stopgap, something to fill in that gap and keep us out in it. A stopgap. This is how it started as a stopgap and living local at Hannifield Reservoir, we took up fly fishing together. And yeah. this was very much something we just did for three months of the year, then popped the rods back in the cupboard again yeah, on June yeah. the 16th and they didn't come out again until the following year. Wow. So you you went from course to fly and that's yeah. a natural progression isn't it? A lot, that's of people start. a lot of people start off with the course fishing and come yeah. in as kids or, or the sea fishing and then it progresses to the fly fishing afterwards. We see yeah. a lot of that, yeah. I was kind of unique in that I just came straight into fly fishing. I've not really done, other than the odd day, I, you know, it's a bit of a gap filler, sea fishing, coast fishing, yeah, yeah. but mostly I've come straight into fly fishing. So what made you decide to go into full-time guiding? Uh, it was, uh, I suppose it was a natural progression. I got very, very interested in fly fishing, very, very involved with fly fishing, with local clubs um, and the competitions, of course, when we started the competitions. And I had people coming to me and asking for my advice, and uh, how do I do this, how do I do that, can I have a day out? And I thought, you know what, I'd like to learn how to do this properly. So I, I took it away and I went and I got a coaching qualification that was Is important that the, um, level, the level two, two yeah, yeah level two coaching qualification which enabled me to uh, structure a day it gave me a good idea of good coaching practices yeah. we're all good anglers we all know what we're talking about when we're fishing but to actually be able to put that into a day and uh, so somebody can experience that um, it, so that's where I started. It was about 12 years ago that I set up Fly Fish in Essex. Oh, right. and it was, I didn't realise it was that. Yeah, yeah, it's 12 years ago, and wow. I've been doing this now full time for the last four years. Right. Uh, so it's uh, yeah, it's uh, it's working all right. It's and it pays for the fuel in the lanny. Yeah, about all it does pay for in <laughs> <and> that thing. <laughs> um, what's your favourite venue? Ah, uh, well, now you're asking. So, uh, small water. I've got a lovely little small water near me called Chigbra Fisheries. Yeah, I fish Chigbra. That a lot of yeah. guys have heard about. It's the place that I do uh, most of my uh, coaching and teaching for beginners' days and experience days. Yeah. It's a perfect little still water, still water. Great facilities, lovely lakes, lovely people. If you're looking at big waters, well, we're here. Yeah. Grafham. Yeah. Grafham it's Reservoir. It's just, yeah. uh, what can I say about the place? It, it offers everything to the visiting fly fisherman, yeah. whether you're a dry fly angler, whether you're a lure man, whether you want to creep around the weed beds looking for big browns on popper fry and things like that, this offers it all. Yeah. What's the funniest thing that has ever happened while guiding a client? <laughs> well, we try... No swearing, please. No, I keep it clean. So we try and keep these days fun and lively all the time, so we're always laughing, we're always joking. Yeah. And you're also trying to uh, control the environment as well, to keep everything as safe and as flowing as you possibly can so yeah. you try and keep away from too many mishaps 
But we do get the occasional... Nobody's we, fell in under your tree. Well, uh, not they haven't <laughs> fallen in, but I've been in a couple of times. Uh, we've been chased by the wildlife. Uh, I did have one occasion when we turned up in the car park in Chigborough to, um, uh, to what was going to be a, a day with a couple who were going to have an experienced day. Met them in the car park, we started chatting away, I started going through the fishing tackle etc etc. About 20 minutes we were chatting for and um, the woman turned around to her husband and said, well this is wonderful, I didn't expect the pottery day to start like this. And I sort of looked at her. <laughs> They've got the wrong car park, they come in for the potty experience up the road there at Chigborough. 20 minutes in. He was sitting there hoping he was going to wing it and get a three days fishing, I think, yeah. but he never said anything. So yeah, it all happens when you're out fishing. Oh, brilliant. Yeah. What's your best moment in fly fishing? Obviously, the competition scene. Yeah. Would you say that it was a, a moment in competition fishing that was your best moment? Or uh, yeah. has there been something else, a specific fish you've caught maybe? Uh, no, I think the one that stands out for me was when I won my first cap for England. My oh, first, you and that was on here back in 2013 and it was my first national final as well yeah uh, actually I got my first cap here there we are my first goal there we go yeah, yeah. And, and that really stands out like with you as well it, 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 that, that, that first it's a bit cap. different for you being English uh, well yeah. yeah I got a cap and thought oh, okay <laughs> <laughs> but it's something you um, uh, you practice for and you aim yeah. for and uh, and when you achieve it it means a lot it does that's that's something that really stands out yeah. of course we've all had great days that stand out i used to i've got a lot of fond memories of fishing with my dad on hannifield reservoir um catching my first fish on hannifield reservoir back in in school yeah. bay I you mean, know i remember when hannifield was great oh that was, it was a great that, fishery. that, that was not, something else that was. i'm not so sure it's um that was as it. great it's, as it used to be it's sad the way it, the way it is gone I mean, we won't get into that but it's yeah. um yeah it, 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 it is a real shame do you think there's a danger of more fisheries going down that road of uh, any method? It's tempting, I think it's very very tempting for fisheries to look at the turnover, to look at the footfall that these places get, but as long as you're using your fly water uh, and you're, you're patronising it and it's nice and full, you can see the guys getting in the boats behind me now, and as long as the fishery remains busy as a fly fishery, I don't think they're going to look to it. They don't want to mix the fisheries up, Yeah. they don't want to, but if they have to, they will eventually do yeah. it. Well, it's, it's a business at the end of the it's day. It's a business it? at the end of the yeah. day, and your you, 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 you spinner fishing can work alongside fly fishing. We experienced that at Hanningfield. Introduce bait into a fishery, you've had it. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Uh, worrying. It's yeah, worrying. it is worrying, yeah. Do yeah. you have any advice for potential clients that are thinking about maybe booking a day with you? You know, how would they get their best out of their day? What, what's the kind of thing that you, you would advise them? Talk to me. We have initial contact over the phone, okay, yeah. an email contact, and when we've decided on a day, talk to me. Tell me exactly what you want to take out from your day. Do you just want a generic guided day? Do you want to specifically work on one um, uh, kind of method? Do you want to concentrate on one area in a lake? What do you want? And then take my advice on board. When I, uh, I will give you a list of things to be prepared for for the day, weather-wise, bring your waterproofs along, bring your hat and glasses, yeah. pack lunch. But I don't say these things just as a routine, no, it's no. because you're going to so need you them. you have like a checklist? Yeah, we have a checklist client. we go through yeah. with the client. And then um, when you turn up, don't be afraid to tell me if it's not going the way you want it to go. Don't yeah. be afraid to say, I'd rather do this, I'd rather well, do Tim, that. I'll stop you there. Yeah. Two hours in, if I've not got a fish, I'll be wanting my money back. Yeah, no, 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 no guarantees <laughs> for this man. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Uh, and uh, just one more then, because I, I'm weary that you're desperate to get on oh, the boat. I am myself. The clouds coming over. Um, what would you say to anyone wishing to become a, a full-time fly fishing guide? Is it a business that is, is viable or is it a, more a lifestyle, do you think? Yeah. Oh, don't go jumping into it. Don't, don't quit your day job and just jump into right, it and decide you. you're a guide. Uh, there's a lot of very good anglers out there, um, a lot of very knowledgeable anglers, but to be able to um, put that into a uh, structured day and present it to a client is a completely different thing. This is a different skill set, isn't it? This isn't I my exactly what this you mean. isn't my day's fishing. This is your day's fishing. Yeah. I'm not being paid to come out and fish. I'm being paid to come out and make sure you have an enjoyable day. Quite commonly, I won't fish all day long. That's a very common thing for me to do, especially on the small That's waters. Common for me as well. <laughs> <laughs> Allegedly. I'll, I'll never pick a rod up. Yeah, and you've also got to know your uh, you've got to know your business model. You've got yeah. to be within uh, reaching distance of waters that you can use, and you've got to you've got to be in an area where you're going to get regular clients because yeah. you need to be out. Have you got a return client base? That yeah, I've got, I'm very lucky. Regular. I've got a, I've got a very regular client base. I've That's got a, maybe 
30% my business is a regular client base. And well, you built that up over Yeah, I built that up over the years. And you build, a, you build a relationship up with these people, with, the, yeah. with, with these um, uh, guys, and um, it becomes progressive which is great because yeah. then you can take one method to another to another. We travel around the country doing fish in different lakes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, some guys book me up once a week sometimes, you wow. know, and I've got, you know, a, a, another chap who book me up one week in the month. Yeah. So we have two days together somewhere in the country and it's like that. And, and of course you build up some great friendships as well. Yeah, you know? I, I can imagine the rapport is excellent. Oh, it's brilliant. Yeah, yeah it's great fun. And it's, it's nice to have that. Uh, yeah, you know your business model um, and, 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 You've got to keep pushing it, pushing it, pushing it. Yeah. You know, it's... Well, I know, um, it, I mean, obviously I've got a YouTube channel. Yeah. But I know you've got a YouTube channel I as have, well. Yeah, and, fly and what I'll do six, actually, yeah. folks, is I'll stick a link in the description to uh, Tim's YouTube channel and you should go and check that out. Brilliant, yeah. Uh, have a look. Let's see your... Uh, your, your day on the dries. That was only three days ago, so yeah. hopefully with this cloud cover and what we've got today, we yeah. should be in for some action. Well, unfortunately, my dry fly rod's in Kidderminster at the moment. It's slowly working its way down the country, <laughs> but I'll need to just fuddle away with a seven weight and see how uh, it's We'll be all right. We'll get yeah. you sorted or something. Anyway, thanks for taking uh, 10 minutes out of the day, mate, just to have a chat with me. No problem. And we'll get in the boats now and see how we get on. Excellent. OK, I'm all tackled up, ready to go. Tim's waited patient for me, obviously an expert. He was tackled up in no time. So where are we going to go today, Tim? Well, I think with this, the way it's looking, you've got a little bit of cloud cover still here. We're going to make the most of this. We're going to head over the other side of the lake. We've got an easterly wind. We're going to drift across the point, starting a deep water point across the hedge end. People, if there's plenty of fish out there, they should be up and feeding on the daphne and the, the, the solitary buzzer at the moment. If we can get out there and get there before the sun comes out, I think we'll be all right. Perfect. Well Tim, we've been out fishing for um, a little while now and uh, it's not the easiest the conditions, the sun's high in the sky and uh, it's a flat calm, we're still seeing fish on the top and we've only had one pool for the boat, what do you think? It's uh, tough going eh? You couldn't have asked for worse conditions if I'm honest, I mean that's got to be pushing mid twenties now and we're only at about half past ten in the morning. Uh, bright sunshine, I'm hoping we might get a bit of ripple come up, that could change things for us because at the moment with this flat calm we can't move to the fish and the fish are staying away from the boat, very difficult. We're chopping and changing the lines between the two of us to try and keep the one just right in front of us there, look, yeah. that's a head and tail you know and yeah, everything about today says they're going to be deep so we've just got to keep plugging away at it I think it's going to be one of those days when all of a sudden, we'll get it like a light switch will switch on and we'll get a bit of action. And until then... I think uh, we mentioned earlier, if, if we get a little bit of a ripple, it might just encourage the fish to come up and start feeding. I think it could, yeah. It's going to give the fish a bit of direction, give us a bit of direction to come over the top of them um, and hopefully pull them on the feed and we might get them even to come up on the dries again. But uh, at the moment, we'll just keep drinking water and, <laughs> and chatting about fishing. Well, I was thinking about digging out my balaclava and boiler suit because I'm cooking my own juice here. It's <laughs> getting a bit much, isn't it? Yeah. We'll find them. Well, we're starting to get some sport, but it's still really hot. So I'm going to ask my guide, why is the fishing so hard? Should have been here yesterday. Well, I've been fishing away. I've done everything Tim's told me. It's just not happening for me. Tim, why am I not catching fish? It's too bright, Lindsay.
well, well, I've tried everything. I've, I've, I've used all the flies the guide's given me. I've gone to the lines that he's told me. And I'm still not getting any sport. Tim, what's happening? Try out a funny things, I are, Lindsay. That's a beauty, isn't it? See? That's what you get when you get a good guide. He puts, puts his client on a big fish, look. That's what you pay the big bucks That's for. That's what you pay the top. Wow. That's a proper graphing fish. Yeah, beautiful, isn't proper it? Proper graphing fish. Nicely done. Right, let's just give him a minute. The 10 centimetre snake has made all the odds and he's starting to rip them in. Snakes, I would not sally my line with a snake, Mr. Joyce. <laughs> Well, I've had an absolutely quality day with Tim. He's been great company, he's, he's put me on fish, and uh, considering the conditions, which was mostly flat calm in the morning, with no wind, we had the bright sun in the sky, we've not had, the weather's done us no favours whatsoever, but we've still managed to catch a few fish. And then we went over to the boils and had a bit of sport, and it was a, it was kind of a fish a chuck for a while there, so we've moved on to the damn wall to finish our day up. We're going to call it a day in about 20 minutes, but I just thought I'd pass over the camera and mic for Tim to tell you how he think I've done. So it's been about what I expected, Lindsay, to be honest. When I saw that forecast and we turned up this morning, that bright sunshine, flat calm, never going to be an easy day's fishing, but we've done all right. We've picked up some fish. You've had that cracker out in the middle there and another one dropped up by the boils there. Great fish. Um, yeah, we've moved about, we've stayed mobile, we've covered the water, and I think we've had action everywhere we've stopped in one way or the other. And we're not done bad by comparison to other boats, so I'm quite happy with that. You know, 30 degrees, sunshine, blistering heat, and we've cracked on all day. And I'm looking forward to that beer tonight, I can tell you. But it's been great fun, it's been great company, I've really enjoyed it, mate. Cheers. Well, we're heading in now. That's us finished for the day, and uh, just in the nick of time by the looks of it, we're, Tim's racing as fast as he can with the boat and we're just trying to get ahead of this storm front that you can see coming in. And I dare say, if this clears the air, tomorrow this place will fish its socks off. <laughs>